This UCSD TV program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest programs. We are the Paradoxical Eight. Bipedal, naked, large-brained, long the master of fire, tools, and language, but still trying to understand ourselves, aware that death is inevitable, yet filled with optimism. We grow up slowly. We hand down knowledge. We empathize and deceive. We shape the future from our shared understanding of the past. Carta brings together experts from diverse disciplines to exchange insights on who we are and how we got here. An exploration made possible by the generosity of humans like you. We've heard a lot uh, at this point uh, about the evolution of hominins in Africa. Uh, uh, it's a complicated history for sure. Uh, let me at this point just cut to the chase and say that humans moved out of Africa um, probably uh, just after two million years ago. And it will be that part of the record that I want to emphasize this afternoon. <coughs> The site of Demenisi in the Georgian Caucasus is uh, very important, uh, records the oldest known, at this point, the oldest known occupations of Eurasia, beginning uh, before 1.85 million years ago. We don't actually have human remains that are that old, but certainly there are stone tools uh, approaching that date. The good part about Demenisi is that, in fact, we have not just scraps of headlamp and bumper and so forth, but virtually whole skeletons, and a number of them. Now, we have five skulls in various states of repair or disrepair. Along with them, there are postcranial bones uh, associated with one juvenile individual, particularly, perhaps, but not clearly associated uh, with one of the adults also. Uh, the material is extremely well preserved. Um, we're very fortunate in that respect. Along with the humans, of course, there are animal bones, and many, many of them, and there is a, a very complete lithic record to go along with this material, which is well-preserved, as I say, in a, in a very carefully studied stratigraphic context. Several of the specimens from Demenisi have been, in the past, uh, likened to African Homo erectus, but the skeletons are quite primitive. One of them in particular is strikingly so, Skull 5, which I will talk about. Uh, at the moment, I think it's fair to say that the taxonomic identity and the paleobiological significance of the Demenisi materials um, remain controversial. Uh, certainly there have been plenty of suggestions, and I'm afraid I've been responsible for some of them, um, but we'll see where things go. Demenisi is situated in Georgia. Georgia is stuck there between the Black Sea and the Caspian with Azerbaijan off to the east. Uh, from Tbilisi, the capital, uh, it's about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes ride. Roads are pretty good these days. Roads were terrible 15 years ago. Things have improved. Down to the site, Demenisi is just a few kilometers from the Armenian border. 
this is the obligatory excavations in progress slide. Um, there are about four meters of sedimentary deposits at Demonisi. Much of the stuff is volcanic in origin. It's very ashy. Uh, there are some other sediments and silts, but ash is always a primary component, which is uh, a good thing. Uh, the stratigraphy is complex. All of the sediments are <coughs> piled atop the Mashavera basalt, which is about 1.85 million years old. That's the bottom of the site, the earliest record. 1.85 million years is the date obtained from radiometric methodology. It is secure. The stratigraphy, uh, <coughs> stratigraphy at the site is, is complex, partially because there are a number of piping features. Water was present near the site um, during periods of heavy rain and so on. Uh, pipes formed underground and then progressed through uh, breaching to collapse toward the surface, filled with sediments, then got buried again. So, so it's been a mess. It's been very hard to sort it out. Um, our geologist, Reed Faring, has done a huge amount of work in this respect, huge in the Trumpian sense. Um, he's been, <laughs> but there have been problems. <laughs> the first traces of human material were, were found at Demonisi in 1991. Excavations, in fact, had been underway at the site for, for quite a period of time before that. Uh, the site is underneath an old medieval town that was on the Silk Road. Uh, the archaeologists were busy at Demonisi for some time, poking around the foundations of the old buildings, and eventually they began to dig up stuff that didn't seem to belong there, not, not just the goats and fish bones from medieval suppers, but um, things that looked quite antique indeed. The paleontologists came in and ascertained that, yes, the material was ancient. Uh, excavations, deeper excavations, uh, got underway, and in 1991, the folks at Demonisi were rewarded with this jaw, the D211 mandible. Uh, it's remarkably complete. It's not, not all of it is there, but what there is is remarkably well preserved. It's a small jaw, and in a number of respects, uh, it does look like Homo erectus. Uh, you've seen one reference to this specimen already. Um, the teeth are about right for Homo erectus, as are the proportions of the mandible itself. Uh, the cranium, which turns out to be the match to the little mandible, was found later in 1999. D2282 was a small cranium, uh, very small capacity, surprisingly so for Homo erectus, um, only a bit more than 650 cc's in this case. Um, Despite the small brain, uh, the thing does share a number of characters with particularly early African erectus. This hulk turned up at the site in 2005. Um, it's way down at the bottom of the site, and within a few days after the fossil had been uncovered and cleaning was underway prior to trying to lift it out, uh, there was a very heavy rain. Uh, things were very nearly washed out. Of course, we have a cover over the site. There is protection, but it rained so much and so long that water began to trickle in around the sides of the excavations, and things were dicey for a while. Fortunately, uh, D4500 survived. Here it is, all cleaned up. Um, it turns out that the cranium found in 2005 is a perfect match, once again, to a mandible, D2600, which had been found e earlier in the year 2000. Uh, the, the upper and the lower, the, the cranium and the mandible simply clicked together once the stuff had been cleaned off. There was no doubt at all. Uh, there is some pathology on the mandible that matches comparable pathology in the region of the ear of the cranium, so there is no doubt about the match. More than other Demonisi hominins, Skull 5, as this one is known, 
exhibits a very rust, uh, robust morphology. Uh, it's pretty clearly a male individual uh, determining sex in the case of these fossil hominins is, is often tricky, often can't be done uh, very accurately. But in this case, uh, we think we have a match. Uh, the skull says male all over. Uh, such a pattern, uh, given the fact that it has the smallest brain of all the Demonisi hominins, is, is unexpected. <laughs> Normally, uh, for other primates, humans too, of course, but for, other, for, for primates, higher primates generally, uh, males tend to exceed the females in brain size by something like 8 to 10 to 15 percent. So having the, the tiniest brain attached to the most robust cranium and jaw is a bit surprising. You can see that there is a, a good deal of variation within the Demonisi assemblage. Uh, the little jaw goes with a smallish brain case, which is quite gracile in its construction. Uh, we've pegged that one skull number two as likely a female. Um, skull number five, on the other hand, is much more robust, clearly distinctive in a number of respects. Uh, number one is like Homo erectus. Number four is a, a small individual. Uh, that one seems to have lived to a ripe old age since it had lost almost its entire dentition. Maybe one tooth was still in place at the time the individual died. Uh, that one may or may not be male, we're not sure. Anyway, there is a, a great deal of diversity at Demonisi. Uh, uh, the crania do look different. This raises the question of how many species might be documented at the site. This is a, a question that's been plaguing us uh, for some time. I think myself, on the basis of the shared anatomy among the Demonisi individuals, they have a common bow plan uh, extending not just to the cranial vault, but to the face insofar as we have it represented, and also to the details of the cranial base. Um, suggest the, the common bow plan suggests uh, that all of the individuals are drawn from just one group. Uh, we've done extensive resampling analyses as well, which cause us to come to the same conclusion that really, in fact, uh, the skulls, the postcranial remains that go with them, uh, are drawn from just one population. Now, there is stratigraphic evidence relating to this question. It doesn't solve the question, of course, but it's, it's important information. It's good to know that the material was all uh, washed into these deposits or arrived in the site by one means or another at about the same time. That is, the, the duration here can't be more than a few hundred or perhaps a thousand years or so, uh, according to the best analyses conducted by the geological side of the team. We'll say then uh, that uh, it's very likely that the Demonisi assemblage samples a population belonging to a single species. I know there may be objections to this. I'm sure there will be. There have been in the past. If it's true, then such a situation is quite rare. Of course, at most localities where hominins are discovered, uh, you've heard a lot about uh, East Africa at this point, uh, Kubifora, Olduvai, also at Sangiran in Java, where there are uh, a number of fossils. The material is scattered through a very long sequence of deposits covering a long period in time. Time as a contributor to variation just cannot be discounted. If the Demonisi fossils document what we can call a population in the past, extending over uh, quite a number of years, of course, then the next question, the next important question, is how the Demonisi sample may relate to the hominin taxa that have previously been recognized. Skull 5, of course, has a very small brain case, uh, a very large projecting face. 
uh, in the vault, also in the basal cranium. Uh, there are some resemblances, not a lot, but some resemblances to Homo erectus. Skull three, uh, which I have not showed you a picture of before, is the subadult from Demonisi. Skull three is pictured here down below. Skull three is similar to Homo habilis. Uh, this is true for the brow ridge, the extent of brow ridge development. It's true particularly for the shape of the vault, the rounding at the back and for the mid-facial profile. Uh, skull three, I must point out, is subadult, so we must allow for some extra growth to have occurred if the individual had grown up. It might have looked, uh, had it grown up, uh, a bit more robust and a bit like the skull to the left there, Homo habilis canimiar 1813. Skulls two and four also have their peculiar aspects, of course. Uh, they have a number of primitive characters, but they also share some features with Homo habilis. So, which species? There is, as I've pointed out, much variation within the, within the Demonisi paleodeme. Uh, this is not an easy question, the question as to which species may be represented. Skull five, the very small-brained and very robust and very primitive-looking individual, does indeed share some characters with Australopithecus as well as Homo. So perhaps in this case, the line, uh, the division between Australopithecus on the one hand and earlier Homo on the other is not so clear-cut after all. Many of these shared similarities are primitive characters, and unfortunately, they don't help us much in answering key questions about phylogenetic affinities. Other characters expressed in the Demonisi materials are Homo erectus-like, and pretty clearly they are specialized characters, characters that have changed during the course of evolution, characters that are said to be derived. Um, these characters include the form of the brow ridge, for example, which is large and bar-like, a little bit of midline keeling on the vault, uh, details of uh, temporal bone construction, things of that sort on the underside of the vault. Indeed, when skulls one and two were first described back in the year 2000, uh, they were grouped with early Homo erectus from the Turkana Basin. If the fossils are included with Homo erectus, clearly that's one way to deal with the material is simply to lump it with Homo erectus. If that is the course we take, then it must be recognized that the boundaries between Homo erectus on the one hand and other early Homo taxa will become less distinct. It will be particularly difficult to distinguish early Homo erectus, African Homo erectus, from specimens attributed to earlier Homo, to Homo habilis in particular. Homo habilis uh, as considered apart from uh, Homo rudolfensis. So to sum up at this point, uh, here is again a specious view of hominin phylogeny. Uh, done by Bernard Wood with Neve Leakey several years ago. Uh, you can read the caution sign. To sum up then, uh, there is apparently no simple answer to the question as to which species may be represented at our site. Indeed, this question is often a tricky one. It's been a hard one for paleoanthropologists to deal with for a long time. In one view, this view expressed on the slide, uh, Dr. Wood showed you an, another version of this very specious hominin phylogeny. In that view, hominin evolution has produced a veritable flowering of lineages over more than six million years. Such bushiness, as it were, is particularly evident for the 2.5 to 1 million year ago interval 
this interval in which uh, Paranthropus on the one hand, Australopithecus, and Homo uh, are represented by multiple species for each group. At Demonices, the fossils seem clearly to be Homo. Now, there are some points of overlap with Australopithecus, as I pointed out, but I would say, on balance, the evidence favors uh, grouping all of our fossils with the genus Homo. Very little doubt about that. At the same time, the assemblage at Demonici does not fall neatly into one of the taxonomic packages that have been proposed. Homo habilis, Homo rudolfensis, Homo ergaster, Homo erectus, and so on. If I were pressed, and I do feel pressed uh, at this point, <laughs> given the morphological resemblances of Demonici to both Homo habilis in a very strict sense, just those fossils uh, allocated to Homo habilis, not to Homo rudolfensis, given the resemblances of our material to Homo habilis and to early Homo erectus, particularly African Homo erectus, I would probably argue, I will argue, that it is most reasonable to place all of these fossils within a single evolutionary species. I would say that the Demonici fossils constitute just one population within this unbranched lineage. Now, this is not to raise the specter of just one species at a time, or to suggest that there isn't a great deal of diversity in the hominin record. Clearly there was, particularly in that interval after about two and a half million years. But as far as our evidence is concerned, it seems to me the best way to go simply to place all the fossils within one evolutionary species. Then, of course, we'd have to argue about what to call it, but this is not the place for that. So, with that, thanks for listening. Thanks very much.